I think he's a bomb. I think he's an absolute bomb. He doesn't know me. I don't know who he is. No one knew who he was probably until yesterday's comments, but I mean to, and I listen to the comments, but to say he has mind made up in the summertime, in the off season that, you know, I had zero chance of winning the VP. In my opinion, should exclude, you know, future, future votes. Um, you know, his problem isn't with me being a bad guy or the biggest jerk in the league. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know anything about me. I mean, I've never met him. I've never had lunch with him. I've never had an interview with him. Um, his problem is I'm not vaccinated. There is much that I disagree with in what Aaron Rodgers said, but I do agree that Hub Arcus should not have a vote given that he admitted that he considers factors that shouldn't be considered. However, the Associated Press, according to Barry Wilner, their lead NFL writer who is responsible for putting together the 50-person panel that votes on all of the awards that have become the official NFL awards that are handed out every year at the NFL Honors, Wilner told the Chicago Sun-Times, we're not going to throw out Hub Arkish's ballot. For MVP, because the word valuable is judgmental, it would be unfair and unwise for us to set any parameters for that award. We can't tell people how to think about what they consider most valuable. Yeesh. Peter, my initial reaction to that is, hey, you can and you should. And you can have a certain amount of discretion, but there has to be limits on your discretion, especially if there's only 50 voters. And if you have somebody who makes it clear that he's going to consider off-season behavior, behavior that happens when people are completely shut down and away from football weeks, if not months, before the season actually begins, that's beyond the pale. That falls beyond the boundaries of what it means to be the MVP of the regular season, not the preseason, not the offseason, not training camp, not March. It's the MVP of football season, week one to week 18. And again, if you're only going to have 50 people vote on this, I think that you have to have some guardrails on the process. And you got a guy who's driven through the guardrails and down the hill, and you're just going to look the other way. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with it, too, but I wouldn't take away Hub Arkish's vote this year. I don't think you change uh, your your rules in the middle of the game. He's got a vote this year. Let him cast his vote this year. I would not have him on the panel after this year. And I'll tell you why. You know, in the 40s and 50s, um, the, the best hitter in baseball was a guy named Ted Williams. And the year that he hit 406, he didn't win the MVP. And one of the reasons he didn't win the MVP is that he hated the writers in Boston. And as legend goes, many hated him. And the last thing they would do is justify uh, any greatness of Ted Williams by honoring him. And so that is what, in my opinion, when I heard Hub Arkish's comments the other day, about uh, I'm not going to uh, vote for Aaron Rodgers, la di da di da for all these reasons that had nothing to do with him as a football player, okay? I, I just thought this is, this reminds me of Ted Williams in the 40s. You know, when, when there were members of the sports writing fraternity who hated Ted Williams, so they wouldn't vote for him for the MVP when he was the last player to hit 400. Now, we didn't know it in 1941. Nobody knew that that was going to be the last time that happened. But I guess I would just say, Mike, I, I, you know, the, our job, okay, and I'm one of the 50 voters, our jobs are very, very simple. And that is vote for the best player or vote for the most valuable player that you see for his performance on the field. There, there should be no consideration whatsoever for how you feel about a player. Look, I'm on the Hall of Fame committee too. Everybody said, ah, you hate this guy. You hate that guy. I could give two craps whether <laughs> what I feel about a guy. I don't care. I don't care. Do you think I go to lunch with Terrell Owens? No. <laughs> Do you think I like Terrell Owens? Not particularly. Did it have one scintilla of a factor in what I voted for for the Hall of Fame? No. I supported Terrell Owens every year because he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. And I will cast my MVP vote 
by noon next Wednesday, and I will do it without regard to the fact that I think Aaron Rodgers and any starting quarterback in this league that doesn't, that isn't vaccinated, Carson Wentz, Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, is making a huge mistake. And not just because you're not doing the best thing for you uh, medically. It's because you basically, before the rules changed, from a 10-day period where you had to be away to now five days per the CDC, if you test positive for COVID on Friday and there's a 10-day period where you're out, you miss two games. That easily could prevent your team. The quarterback by far is the most important player on a team. That could prevent your team from making the playoffs. And look, say whatever you want about how the Vikings, would they never would have won at Lambeau Field last week. I don't think they would have won either. Who gave them a better chance to win? Kirk Cousins or Sean Mannion? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous to even debate this. And so I believe that if you are the starting quarterback of the team, no matter what you feel personally, uh, I, I believe very strongly that because you hold such a position of influence on your team, that it's different from the special teamer who says, or the, the nickel corner who says, I'm not getting vaccinated. I don't believe in it. It's just different. And anybody who says it isn't different is is fooling themselves. Well, and the difference here is the Packers with Aaron Rodgers after he returned from missing the week nine game against the Chiefs. When we finally got, we thought, Aaron Rodgers versus Patrick Mahomes, it got derailed by that positive test result because as an unvaccinated player, tested every single day Rodgers and Wentz and Cousins and every other unvaccinated player have been all year long I remember saying at the time when the question came up oh they're not going to vote for him for MVP now it's like well no he may not win the MVP because the Packers may not be the number one seed in the NFC if the Buccaneers are the number one seed in the NFC Tom Brady's probably going to be the MVP it's harder to be the MVP if you're a quarterback of a team that isn't the number one seed. Your numbers have to be off the charts to supplant the two quarterbacks from the teams that finish with the top seeds, one in each conference. And problem solved. Packers are 13-3, and three, and very well, if not likely, will land 14-3, and three, notwithstanding the fact that one of those losses came when Aaron Rodgers was gone because he tested positive on a Wednesday, missed a game, came back just in time for the following game against Seattle, and they won, and they've kept winning. And he's earned the MVP in my regard. I know you can't technically say who you're going to vote for. That's the rule that Hub Arkish apologizes for violating. He spoke publicly about his plans. He has no reservations, no qualms, no apologies, no regret for believing that Aaron Rodgers shouldn't be the MVP for reasons other than his performance on the field. And see, Peter, where we disagree on this, we're on, we're on the same page as it relates to Hub Arkish's qualifications going forward. The votes haven't been cast yet. If you've disqualified yourself in advance, then then they should take the vote. I don't know why they wouldn't take the vote. I mean, if you would come out and say something ludicrous about your plans for your vote, I would expect the AP to take them away. If you said you were gonna you were gonna vote for a Sean Mannion for MVP because of how he bravely went into the game on Sunday night, only two days after coming off the COVID list, or some other cockamamie explanation. There's a point where it's it's so far beyond the discretion that reasonably can be exercised that you just have to say, this person has made it clear to us that they're not fit to be a voter. And I think Hub Arkish has made it clear through his comments he's not fit to be a voter. So why wait until after this round of voting? They could plug somebody else in. There's only 50 votes. They could throw a rock and hit somebody else who's more qualified to cast the ballot. Why won't they do it? That's what is going to cause the, the final vote, and maybe it's going to be 49 votes for Aaron Rodgers. I don't know. Maybe there's others who feel like Hub Arkish does, and maybe those others have now been put on notice. You better be careful. You better not vote for any guy for reasons other than what he did on the field. This actually may help Aaron Rodgers, that he may get more votes for MVP because others who may have been tempted – to do what they did to Ted Williams back before we both were alive, uh, those folks may not do it now. Look, about the, um, the worthiness of MVP candidates this year, in my opinion, I think you could easily justify for voting. I, I, could, I could justify 
four people uh, getting getting my vote. Number one, Tom Brady. Number two, Joe Burrow. Number three, Aaron Rodgers. Number four, Cooper Cup. Okay? And the reason why I mention all of those people is that every single one of them has done something this year that to me is bordering on on unbelievable. You know, Tom Brady bringing his team uh, back again through a huge number of injuries, <clears throat> leading the NFL in passing yards and in touchdowns. <clears throat> and forget how old he is. I don't think that's a factor at all. But in his performance, he's vitally important to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They'd be 6-10 and 10 without him right now. Maybe 5-11. and 11. I, I, I don't even know. But And then Joe Burrow. I mean, coming off an injury and coming back to play as well as he had to sweep the Ravens and the Steelers, to beat the all-powerful Kansas City Chiefs on a huge winning streak, to win the, the AFC North. That's huge. Cooper Cup, with all of his incredible numbers and how vitally important he's been to every part of the Rams offense. And then obviously Aaron Rodgers, two things. You know, after the debacle of his first game of the season against New Orleans, you know, what's incredible to me is that a quarterback can go through whatever it is, 15 games, you know, and have uh, 35 touchdowns, two interceptions. And the other part of Rodgers' value is we saw what happened when he wasn't there. They were absolutely feeble, toothless without him against Kansas City when they had to play as backup. And that alone should not in any way decide who's the MVP because who knows if Blaine Gabbard plays against Team X, I, I can't tell you that it would be a whole lot better. All I'm saying is that we saw it all year with Aaron Rodgers and, and who knows. I've got a vote by next Wednesday. I've got a decision to make but I'll be conscientious in making that decision. Yeah, you're not going to make that decision based upon the fact that he's not vaccinated. You're not going to make that decision based upon the fact that he created a mess for the Packers, or at least he contributed to it because the Packers had some blame as well. But the offseason drama, that doesn't matter. The vaccination immunization distinction, that doesn't matter, even though I'm sure we both believe that he was not truthful in his use of the term immunized, that has nothing to do right. with his performance on the field. And that, that's my concern, Peter. When you have a voter who has flat out said, I am going to consider inappropriate factors in my decision-making process, that to me should prompt the Associated Press to spring into action and say, we can't let this guy vote. How is our award supposed to have any credibility if we know there's a voter, if we're on notice there's a voter who is not going to, to use a fair and reasonable interpretation of what it means to be valuable. That, because the way that Wilner explained it to Chicago sometimes, whatever word you, whatever, hey, valuable is whatever you choose. You got one of the 50 votes. You can de determine what that word means to you however you want to do it. That, that, uh, there has to be a limit to how you interpret that phrase. And he's so far beyond it. That's why I'm saying, and I know that's a strong statement to make, but that's okay. He made a strong statement about Aaron Rodgers. I'll make a strong statement about him. He shouldn't have a vote. He shouldn't have a vote. And I don't know why they wouldn't take it away. If they won't take it away now, they'll never take it away for anybody. Um, I disagree with that. You know, very quietly. Preemptively, I mean. That list, Preemptively. Well, yeah. I mean, if you look at that list, and I, I don't really, I, I can't answer how much... I see different people on that list almost every year. I have no idea why one guy or one woman went away and someone else was added. I, I, don't, I don't have any idea. Uh, this will get a lot of attention. If Hub Arkish is not on the list next year, it will get a lot of attention because people will assume, rightfully so most likely, that it was done because they don't want somebody who preordains, uh, you know, basically that I'm not going to vote for a guy either because I think he's a jerk or I don't like him or wh what, whatever the reason. But I just think I don't like the precedent it sets to remove somebody's vote 
when you're on the verge of making it. When you're when you're six days away from making it, you say, oh, hold on, we don't like what you're saying. So in the future, what if somebody else says something that uh, such and such did a stupid thing? Or I, I, I don't, I don't know. But to me, it sets a bad precedent of changing who votes. You know, six or seven days before the vote happens. I think it sets a bad precedent of letting a guy who is flat out said he intends to cast a vote that is influenced by improper factors to go ahead and cast that vote. So um, let me ask you this about the process, because you mentioned you've got four candidates and you made a good case for each of them. I still don't like the fact and I think this is a good conversation generally because the entire AP voting process needs an enema and it needs to be overhauled because I don't like only 50 and I don't like one vote per person. Wouldn't you like to have first place, I second don't like place, one third vote place like person. they do for the Heisman? Mike, I've written this a hundred times. You know, I think it's ridiculous to have an all or nothing. Uh, you know, at least uh, when, you, when you're in boxing, okay, you know, you can vote for, you know, if you're in a, if you're, if you're uh, scoring by rounds, you can vote for 10 to 8, 10 to 9, 10 to 7, whatever, whatever it is. And, and in baseball, they do the right thing. You vote for, I think it's 10 MVP candidates, and it's the, the vote is like 13, 10, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, or something like that. And so to me, I would much rather be able to say, okay, I'll put Cooper Cup here, and then right next to him, I'm going to have Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow in whatever order, okay? And all of them then will... Uh, get some value in the vote. And I've asked this question before, and the AP has basically come out and said, hey, listen, we wouldn't want someone who who, who didn't get the most first place votes to win the MVP. And theoretically, could that happen? Yes. I mean, if, if Tom Brady got 25 first place votes, Aaron Rodgers got 22, but everybody who didn't vote Aaron Rodgers won, voted him number two, and a few people voted Tom Brady fifth or sixth. It, theoretically, yes, it is possible that that could happen. But to me, that isn't important enough to take away the fact that every person... I, I don't like having a tie for the MVP, for instance, okay? And it's happened... When Brett Favre tied Barry Sanders, it happened when uh, when Peyton Manning tied uh, Steve McNair. Steve McNair. Yeah, I, I don't I don't love I don't love that either. I don't like co MVPs, and there wouldn't be a co MVP almost certainly if you had a voting system that you said, "Give me the top five. The Heisman Trophy's been doing first place, second place, third place for as long as I've been paying attention to it. And there's never been a situation that I can recall where the winner didn't also have the most first place votes. Never, ever. Yeah. I, I don't think it would happen. I think it's an unfounded fear. I think they just don't want to change. You know, we get these stodgy old institutions that just don't want to change. And the, 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 the reason that I think they need to take this more seriously than they otherwise should is because the NFL has attached the shield to these awards. And I asked the NFL earlier this week for comment about, oh, it wouldn't be appropriate for us to comment on these procedures. Well, you've made them your official awards. You you change the vibe. It's one thing for the Associated Press to say our MVP is Aaron Rodgers or Cooper Cup or whoever. It's another thing when the trophy has a big, giant, brass NFL shield on it. It's handed out at an award show called the NFL Honors. To the average person, it's the NFL handing out that award, not the Associated Press or any other news organization. That, to me, makes it even more important that the AP have the best voters, the right number, and the right process to ensure that the outcome is always fair. And I like the fact that other people who had special seasons are going to get consideration just by virtue of the final numbers. Because you'll see Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Cooper Cup. Joe Burrow, their names will all be in that final top four, top five. And, right. and, and that's just recognition that I think is fair for them to get instead of the possibility that it's 
49 votes for Aaron Rodgers and one for Tom Brady and no mention of anyone else. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.